Hi Gophers, my name is Alex Pluto and welcome to Package Main, a channel about Go. When I say testable code, what I mean is code that can be easily programmatically verified. We can say that code is testable when we don't have to change the program itself when we are adding unit tests. It doesn't matter if you are following test-driven development or not, testable code makes your program more flexible and maintainable due to its modularity. And when we are talking about Go, it has very good built-in robust testing functionality. So in the beginning you don't have to import any third-party testing packages. So start cleaning in the beginning and if it's not enough, you can add a helper package later, such as testify slash assert. First of all, understanding of solid principles will help you a lot with writing testable code. I won't go into details, but single responsibility and dependency inversion principles will help you a lot here. For example, it's much easier and cleaner to test small function, which does only one thing. Let's see it on practice. I'll write a simple function which finds a string in the slice of strings. So let's call it string in slice. So first argument is slice of strings and the next one is find string which will return boolean value. So here's our function. It's perfectly testable. It's deterministic. So for any given input, we have only one possible output. And let's write a test for this. So I'll create a separate file. Let's test with God string in slice. For example, A and B here, and we want to find C. So we should be false. So what we can check if God is true, it shouldn't happen. RF expecting false got true. Let's execute the test. All right, the test completed, everything is good. The string and slice function is very simple and may have only few test cases. But bigger functions may have more test cases and table tests would be very helpful here. Let me show how to do it on, on this example. So we'll define the list of tests. So each test would have input as a slice and then what we want to find and then expected output, which is one, which is boolean. And let's define some tests. So you don't need this anymore. For example, the first test can be yeah, the same as here and we are expecting expecting false. The next one can be the same, but B and expecting true. Now what we have to do is to iterate over the test variable. So for D, actually we already have T, so it's T here, range tests. And we can use subtests here. So our T variable which is input into the test function has a method run which accepts the name and then the callback. So name can be just defined since it's already a string. Then func same t testing t. And here for example we'll do the same got is equal string in slice 
slice is tt slice and then tt find right and now we can check if got not equal tt want and do as we did before t error f expecting go t right so expecting is tt want go t will be good the change we just made will allow us to add new test cases very easily into the testing function all right now let's go and see if it still works all right, as you can see, there are two subtests now executed. Now let's take more complex code, which calls external API and does something with the response. In this example, we'll call GitHub API and check average stars per repository of the user. Let's create this function under the same package. So get average stars per repo. As input argument, we will have username. And average can be float, so let's do float64, error. So let's call the API itself, um, just with the default HTTP client, so http.get. Um, and here we'll, we'll use GitHub API URL, which is https api.github.com slash users slash username should replace by argument and repos and send username here mm, to r and if error is not nil return zero error now let's parse the response so if error json if new decoder from response body decode and we have to decode it somewhere so let's define the response type so api will return us the list of repositories so we just need to define this repository structure we don't need all fields we just need star gazers count which is int and star gazers count so repos is slice of repo so we got to repos and yeah if it's not nil return zero nil so now we have the response so what we just need to do is to calculate the average so we'll calculate total as int and we'll do loop of the repos and will be total r dot star users count and now just calculate the average so return float 64 from total divide by float 64 size of repos error is nil and you just need to do this check if len of repos equal zero just return zero nil so you don't divide by zero and now let's write a test for this function so I'll copy the similar structure so just rename the function here and as input we have username string and what do we want is float 64 number and let's try some usernames oops so octocat would be the first one um i don't know the average number so we'll need to guess first and then change it probably um and for example my name then 
yeah so this function would go here dd username got so error we shouldn't skip errors in tests as well so never do something like this because we actually want to check what value error has can be nil can be not nil maybe we can check the message of the error as well so let's see assuming that we don't want any errors here so if error not nil then we throw th something expecting nil error got and let's dump the error so error all right then if got not equal what we want expecting so it's not boolean let's use f dt want got yes we don't have find anymore so let's take username and a lot of errors all right let's try to execute this test yep so they fail because i didn't know the real answers let me just change them And let's run it again. All right, all our tests passed, but let's go back to them and review them. It may work well in the beginning. However, it's not a good test. It can be flaky. The API response can change, or API won't be available, or your test servers don't have external connectivity. So how do we test this function without testing the HTTP call itself? We may need to restructure our program and introduce interfaces. So during the test, we can mock the GitHub API. All right, I'll create a github.go file here in the same package. I'll move some code from here. So we will need this type. Rapper. Now let's create the interface itself. I'll call it repositories API, which is interface which will have only one function for now get repos so username as a string and it will return list of repositories and possible error so that's the interface now let's create a mock structure for this interface so struct empty and we just need to implement this function get repos so I'll do this get repos um, so yeah um, mock now let's return something which can be used by tests um, we will return the list of repositories let's return two for example so the first repository start getting discount count can be six and then for example two and no error so that's our mock now we can do the same but for actual api so I'll call it github and um, github here 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 and we will move the code from our old function so what we have to move is this part and this part so let's do this here however instead of zero let's return nil let's return nil here as well if all good return list of wrappers and nil as error now let's go back to our get average stars per repo function and actually replace the part we just removed so what we can do we can add a new function argument which will be the repositories api instance so for test it can be mock for real usage it can be github instance so repositories api instance for example um, why it doesn't see this i'll just copy Great, so now we need to get list of repos and error from 
our instance dot get wrappers, pass the username there, and check for the error. But yeah, cool. As you can see, the function now is much smaller and easier to read, and really faster as well. And it's very important because on bigger complex projects, you don't want developers to wait for their tests to complete or fail. One more small thing we still have to do is change our tests. Because now they wouldn't work uh, because we don't send the repositories instance here. Now we, what we can define it as, uh, as mock. So, and send it here. And instead of this, actually user doesn't matter right now because the mock would return anyway. Though this function can be more complex if you want to test maybe some validation or for this user to return this amount. But here let's just keep octocat. And so we had two repositories, one was six count and two, so the average would be four right now. And it still doesn't work. And we have an error here. Cannot implement. Right, that's because our mock should be a pointer, so it should be new mock. All right. Now let's go and see if it works. It still works. And as you can see, it's actually much faster. It was almost one second before, and now it's 13 milliseconds. If you would do this from the beginning, it will save us some time of restructuring the program. That's what I mean when I say testable code. Another good practice for testing in Go is to put your test into a separate package with the name package underscore test, which prevents access to private variables, which is good for tests, which also allows you to write tests as though you were the real user of the package. So let's do this change really quick here. So we have this testable test. Now we will make it different package. And the testable package itself should be imported. So all this function should say testable dot something, right? So it's here, it's here, and it's here. And as you can see, it's now imported. So our test acting as a real user of the package. Let's go and see if it still works. Right, it works. There are a few more global good practices which can be applied to any language when we are talking about testing. We won't go into the details, but such can be don't use global variables or global state. It makes tests very difficult to write and also makes them flaky by default. Separate unit tests from other types of tests, such as integration tests. The latter one doesn't use mocks and is slower. And yes, testable code is definitely a good code. I hope it was interesting and helpful. See you later.